Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Yeah, it's been a couple of days of a uh, little bit of thawing, but it takes a couple days for that water to soak in and wind up in my pond, so it's looking better. We're making, well, once in a while it goes to 6 at 12.9 uh, volts. Of course, there's a diode between there and the battery, yep. And we're using uh, 37 amps. And the solar is charging 21, and that's saying 27. And this other old tired solar panel is making a little over five, and it's about 2:30 in the afternoon. So let's go on and take a look at the smart drive. Okay, here's what we got on the top side. We got what, about uh, an inch and a half or two room between the top of the, or the bottom of the gate and the top of the water. Okay, so things are looking good here. See if we got any warmth at all. No, nope. of course it's only maybe 32, 30, 30 degrees. No, nope, can't feel any heat. So let me put the camera down and throw that belt on the other one and see if we can add anything with the second generator. Okay, threw the other belt on, added the other generator in. Of course, it slowed the water wheel down a little bit and wound up uh, making the same amount. And I took the fuse out of the smart drive side and just tried this one, and it was making just about, no, it wasn't either, it was a little bit less than the smart drive would make. So the smart drive works better than this um, at this RPM anyways. And um, we tried them in series and that made it worse. So I think I'm going to stick, stick with this and uh, hopefully Spring is coming and I can put that third wire in and run the AC up there and see how much we can gain by that. I'm going to throw a little oil on the wooden bearings, but uh, hopefully you can see. I'm not going to get that cover off of there with all that ice on there. Um, I think it was like uh, 12 degrees last night. And pretty windy, so it must have made made a difference because we did build up a little bit of ice. Let's see what the other side looks like. The other side of the road coming out. Okay, that's the pipe coming out of the actual spring house. And if you watched my other video where I told about the, how the spring works, you can see this T here. The water's coming out of there. Now that's coming off the bottom of the the floor of the spring house, so that'll keep the, the floor of the spring clean. So that's 
how that works. There wasn't any water coming out when I made that video, so maybe that'll help clear it up for some of you. Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Now I've been messing with these cheap uh, PWM solar controllers. The ones that don't have enough uh, heavy enough foil or build up with any kind of solder or anything. And this is the one that didn't work right from the get-go. I use it to experiment on. So I th the other one I scraped with an X-Acto knife, the one I'm using, and you know it doesn't work great. So I thought I wonder if I could sandblast that coating off of the copper traces. And looks like it did all right. So and I did on the back side too. So now I should be able to run solder on all those and build them up so they'll carry a little bit of current. So I think I'm going to give that a whirl. Okay, we'll give this a try. Now where this uh, terminal strip goes, those holes are all really nice and clean now. So I took toothpicks pushed up through them so that'll keep the solder from closing them off so when I go to put that back on it'll be all ready to go. Of course this is the one that doesn't work so I may never put it back on but I just want to try all these methods out on something before I actually try it on a good one. So let's we'll see how this goes. works nice. Let's try it up here where it's a little more congested. Let's see that right there. Sucking up the solder.
Okay, that side went pretty good. And you can see these will just pull right out of there. And the hole's clear. Oop, I can see through it. So I can <laughs> keep here in frame. I can do the same to this side. So they work pretty good. I think that's how I'll do the uh, ones that I'm actually going to use. Even up here, none of it flowed over into each other. It all stayed right on the where it was supposed to. Right here. So, uh, looks like a pretty good method. As long as there, well, of course there was some writing on there marking what they were. That's gone. But, uh, I don't need to know that stuff anyway, so because it's marked on the on the case here, anyways. So it might be of interest to some of you. So yeah, I didn't get that one. Should have got that one. So if you think that's a method that'll work for you, got a sandblaster or know somebody that does, doesn't take very long. Just a couple of minutes being real careful when you're doing it. Kind of holding back on the trigger a little bit. So give her a try. Might work for you. Well it's a couple days later and yesterday was pretty decent out. And I managed to find some uh, wire to uh, run between my control panel up here at the house and down at the uh, wheelhouse for that third wire so I can run the three phase up and it's just temporary I just got it thrown on the ground I don't know if you'll be able to say it or not and it runs down here now mine is is aerial down there up to the house so it'll be quite a chore adding another one to that so I wanted to try it out first being that uh, I don't have a bucket truck available anymore it used to be easy when I was the cable guy What we got is this just temporary now. <laughs> but the wire's coming out of the smart drive. They're just going to the two original wires which go overhead. And this is the other wire that I put in temporary. Of course none of the meter will work now because it's bypassed and it's DC anyways. Uh, water wheel and stuff seems to be running about the same speed. Thank you. I'll show you out here. Okay, we'll go up the top side. Okay, and while I was uh, making a changeover, I closed my gate and I pulled this one overflow out so the water would go down there so it wouldn't overflow the pond. And believe it or not, that one four inch pipe lowered the pond water more than what the water wheels do. And it's got to be just because of the, the suction that it creates. But it's amazing. You wouldn't think a four inch pipe could uh, move more water than you see going right there, but it does. So, we'll go back up to the house and we'll see what the results are. Okay, we're back up to the house and there's the, the, uh, yeah, three-phase rectifier. I moved it up here. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. It's not on a heat sink. And before I switched it over, 
I was getting this to Wesker over 5 amps. Now I'm getting a little over 6 amps. So, gain an amp. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work to gain an amp, but it is 24 hours a day, and it might make a difference when I get the uh, MPPT controller back working again, see how it performs there. So, I know a lot of you said that I'd uh, have a pretty good gain by doing this. I actually expected it to be a little more than what I'm seeing here. So apparently I'm not losing as much in my transport as I thought. Of course I put a lot heavier wire in than uh, was really necessary I think. So but uh, that's that's the results of uh, running the AC up so far. So I guess I'll I'll throw this video up. Maybe some of you'll find it interesting. So if you liked her, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Now that I ended the video, I thought of something else that I wanted to check. So I was wondering what the frequency of this thing is, and it's like. Between 54 and 57. <laughs> That's pretty close to 60 cycles. That's neat. Okay, I'm going to do a open circuit voltage test too before I disconnect everything. So I'll be right back and I'll check that out. Okay, there's with it running. I'm going to pull a fuse so it'll be running open circuit. Sixteen. Neat. Okay. Now that I see that, I gotta go get a light bulb and try. I'll be back. Okay. Here's a uh, forty-watt appliance bulb. Looks pretty normal. Hmm. All right. Well, that was fun. Now the video is over. <laughs>